All right, here's a demonstration of another switching regulator. Let's move down a little bit. It's an LM2575T-5. It's a 5-volt output switching regulator. In the case of this circuit, I have an input of 17 volts. As you can see on the meter, it's putting out about 5. You can put in up to 60 volts, I believe, on this particular part or related parts. Let's zoom in on the actual regulator circuit itself. In this case, it's powering an Arduino Nano. That's nothing. In this case, I just have the pulse width modulation hooked up to control an LED. What is the <coughs> excuse me, what is the advantage? <coughs> excuse me. What's the advantage of this switching regulator? At 17 volts switch down to 5 volts, something like 70-75% of your energy is going to be used for nothing but heating up the voltage regulator if you use the 3 pin say a 7805 you're burning up a lot of energy as heat so a switching regulator is, a, is more energy efficient let's look at the circuit itself a little bit closer it really consists of five parts the regulator itself this is a 330 microhenry coil a output capacitor an input capacitor and hidden behind there you may a little hard to see is a 1N 5819 high speed shot key diode the device itself runs at 52 kilohertz and its duty cycle is varied to control the output to keep it right at 5 volts, if right close to 5 volts. Um, it has 5 pins. It takes the voltage and the feedback. It has 5 pins. It has an input, output, feedback, on, off, and ground. You often ground the on, off just to leave it on. It can be switched on and off with a microcontroller if necessary. So it's a very simple, highly efficient switching regulator. It's cheap. I think I got 10 of them for $2. Uh, the capac capacitors were dirt cheap. No, eBay tends to be that way. Again, this is, this is highly efficient. Now, if we had a situation where, for instance, I needed 5 volts and it was 9 volts or less that I'm inputting, use your 7805s, your simple 3-pin regulators, use them. But if you're getting a wide voltage input to a low voltage, you really need to go to these. I'll explain in the schematic what you have to look out for when you build these type circuits. Here is the actual schematic, more or less, of the 5-volt regulator I used in the video. In my case, I put in uh, 17 volts or so. This uh, You can put in up to 40 to 60 volts according to the spec sheet. And you have only four external components to get it to work. CN is an input capacitor. I think I used a 470 instead of a 100. You can use a larger one and it won't hurt it. It needs You need this capacitor. It must be in there to prevent noise and transients from coming on the input and mess screwing up your output. You want to use a high quality E, low ESR capacitor. I use standard electrolytics. They seem to work fine. The LM2575 has actually five pins. Pin one is an input. Pin three is ground. Pin five is an on-off pin. You could hook this to a microcontroller and actually under computer control switch it on and off. In this case, we wanted it on all the time, so it was simply grounded. 
Pin 2 is the output. This produces a pulse width modulated output whose, whose duty cycle is dependent on the voltage fed back feedback on feedback pin 4. We'll look at that a little more in a moment. L1 and C out essentially form a sort of a tank or storage circuit for the energy that you're pumping into it from pin 2, the pulse width modulation output. D1 here is a high speed Schottky switching diode. It's used on the off cycle of the pulse width modulation output when the magnetic field on L1 collapses, that energy through D1 is also stored back on the capacitor. This again, of course, illustrates a pulse width modulated voltage into our inductor capacitor tank filter circuit. The voltage output is dependent again on the duty cycle, which is T on divided by T period times the voltage peak. This is what happens during the on time. This is referring basically to the inductor. This is called a buck regulator, and it steps down the voltage. If you look at the current in the inductor during the on time of the duty cycle, the current will climb. But during the off time, when the current climbs through that inductor, it generates a magnetic field. During the off time, that magnetic field collapses, producing an inverted voltage output, which is fed through the diode D1 that I mentioned earlier. I'm adding energy to the inductor magnetic field, and during the off time, that energy is released through the diode to charge up that help charge up the capacitor. Here's a simplified drawing of it. Internally in the LM2575 you have a switching transistor like this, your pulse width modulation control, and your feedback goes to your pulse width modulation control. I use this exact same circuit as a demo with an Arduino using its pulse width modulation output, not using feedback to make a variable output voltage. But that's in another video. But this is your basic tank circuit. You're pumping energy into L1 and the capacitor during the on time. During the off time, when the magnetic field collapses, that energy is added back through the catch diode and charges up the capacitor. Preferably, if you have proper feedback circuits, we control the uh, duty cycle to maintain a steady voltage output. This illustrates the internal block diagram of the LM2575 series of voltage uh, switching voltage regulators. Pin 1, as we mentioned before, is VN. It goes right over to this 1 amp switching transistor, which produces your output pulse width modulation pulse. Of course, it has an internal regulator. This is the circuit that controls the on and off. Uh, if it's, if it's um, tied to ground, it will turn on. If it's high, it will turn off. Here is your feedback input. In reality, this particular design is used for 5 volt fixed outputs, uh, 12 volt, 15 volt, and even adjustable. The only difference is, is they change these two resistors. I get a feedback voltage from the uh, output circuit back through pin 4. We use a 1.23 volt reference, which is compared to an error amp. This has a 52 kilohertz internal oscillator. This is the frequency of the pulse width modulation output. If you want period, divide 1 by 52 kilohertz, and that's your period. The pulse, the duty cycle is controlled by comparing the feedback to the uh, band gap reference. 
It also has a reset circuit, and on the driver output, it has a circuit that will that operates as a current limiter and thermal shutdown if it gets hot. Pulling back, you can see the block diagram versus the external connections. And on the website, it will exp it, you can look these values up along with the device spec sheet. One last word. Oh yes, I forgot about this. You can also use this circuit, which is also in the spec sheet, to produce an under voltage lockout circuit. Okay, what if I what if I need 12 volts out and I'm only putting in 6 volts? You have to select Zener diode Z1 based on where you want it to lock out. So if I need 12 volts output, I'm going to have to put in a minimum of 15 volts. So this should be a 15 volt Zener. At, 50, at fi greater than 15 volts, this will break down, feed current to Q1. Q1 will switch on. Pin 5 goes low, and the, and the device outputs a voltage. If it's any lower, pin 5 stays high and it never turns on. Finally, either though this is showing the 2575 adjustable, all of this is the same. Because you're dealing with this high frequency 52 kilohertz, and either though mine work fine on a breadboard with completely improper wiring, for really stable operation you want a PC board all of these connections, see the input capacitor, the grounds, the um, catch diode, and the outputs and stuff, you want very short leads and very close to the regulator. This assures the best operation. Mine worked fine by not doing this, but that's, that's something you might want to... What I did was to demonstrate that it works. That is not the way you want to build it in the end. So, this is just an introduction to switching regulators and a, sip and, and a simple switching regulator, the LM2575. Thanks for listening to the video. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.